You're now live. Hello again. Here we are at the Marshall Gallery. And this evening we have the distinct privilege and pleasure of welcoming Mr. Steve Hickok. So, Steve, you can see it's written all over his face, <laughs> is a descendant of none other than Wild Bill. So I'm now going to switch into Steve's native language so that he can <laughs> understand me a little better. So, Steve, why don't you just, oh, you just tell us a little bit about this uh, Wild West? Well, I left my cowboy hat and my guns home. Oh, tonight. shoot. <laughs> no pun intended. So, oh, that's funny. Uh, Steve, as you can see, is a master of modern classicism. He's wonderful. I'm standing right in the way of his masterpiece here. He's just adding the final touch, which is this gorgeous red that brings this piece to life. <clears throat> and he is a master of abstract art, but it's kind of cubist and abstract and all things in one. Um, and he also happens to be a splendid classical musician. So maybe later on this evening, he will tickle the ivories a bit for us. Uh, meanwhile, I'd like Steve himself to talk to us about his raison d'être. Can yes. you do that? Yes. Steve, the floor is yours. Um, I started this series, uh, Peter, in um, the, uh, like, a few years ago, and the purpose of it was to uh, give the audience a chance to experience rest within the painting. When there was so much you know, confusion going on, I really wanted to create the peace, the space for, for peace. And so I did the minimal scape with the idea that it's like on the earth, but it's a place of rest. Um, so that's kind of the inspiration behind the so minimal this, scape. So you've got philosophy as well mm -hmm. as building on the works of the masters. For example, I see in a lot of your work um, influences of Picasso. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And I see the Bauhaus mm -hmm. and other influences like that. Can you tell us a little bit of, of that and how you uh, how you got into that? Yes. Well, I've always been a fan of Picasso. You you nailed it, uh, Peter. Um, the series that this represents is called the bloom love series and basically the idea is that the most important thing to do in you know in life is to love people and to give out and it's actually inspired from a passage of in the bible called the greatest of these is love oh. um, and so the idea is that we need to share love to people it's the most important thing to share and then and the letters and the numbers in the uh, paintings represent the words that need to be formed and said to people maybe you haven't expressed gratitude or love enough to. Oh. So that's sort of the inspiration behind the Bloom Love series. And there's some over here. And uh, the same concept here with the numbers and the letters are really important. So you'll find them within my work. Um, sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it's just bold and direct. Um, but... Yeah, it's been fun. To, to, I want to say something that's interesting about this gallery. Um, just 30 years ago, I got out of art college. Actually, it might have been 40. I'm flashed by. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, I came down Main Street. I came down here on Main Street, and there was a gallery called Suzanne Brown. Yes. And it was only two doors down from here. Very and famous so now, my age, I'm coming back. Uh -huh. I'm on the same street having a show at Peter's Marshall Gallery. <laughs> so that's an eventful moment for me. In the time well, of, uh, it's an eventful full circle. An eventful event for us to have the famous Steve Hickok with us. And we love your work and we know that the public are going to respond to it very, very well. Yes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Huh. You're going to follow, yes, but Douglas is not quite ready. Uh, he's still a little, little indisposed after his momentous journey from Utah today. Could you fill in for a couple of minutes? Well, I certainly could, yes.
So, Douglas Agard is another phenomenon. He is a native of Utah. Uh, oh, here he is. Here's Douglas, right behind me. Uh, Douglas is a native of Utah, and I apologize for the noise in the background. Douglas has just arrived after a marathon journey of nine hours. Um, yeah, let me let me get the oh. set up. Yeah, there you go. Hold up. Just a minute. Thank uh, you. Uh, Douglas. <laughs> so, uh, Utah is a remarkable state. It has desert southwest. It has lush pasture lands. It has gorgeous mountain vistas. Uh, it has dinosaurs. <laughs> so it's a very varied state. Uh, our boys are still hanging the work, which has just arrived. Uh, but Douglas captures the, the color and the beauty of this unique Western landscape so beautifully. And I want Douglas to talk about his own work a little bit. This is our Douglas Agar. Sure. What would you like to know? Everything. <laughs> OK. So, Tell us about your background in art, your sure. why you are inspired by the Utah landscape, and how you are able to capture it so well. Well, I think part of that is because as a child, when I grew up, I was always looking at things, noticing things, you know, um, seeing how light played on things, and and. Uh, the light where I live in Utah is, is can be pretty amazing. Um, and I have a background with the, with the, the farmland because my, my uh, grandfather was a rancher, but he also ranched in the mountains. And so I'm very fond of the aspen trees because we, we, uh, would, we had sheep up on the mountain. And uh, so that's where I got my love for aspen trees was that. And, and uh, so it's a little interesting the the mix of paintings that I do. I you know with the farmland and the. I'm looking, and as you speak, I'm looking over your shoulder at this beautiful work, which is highly illustrative of what Douglas is talking about. So, unbeknownst to many, Utah is the home of the oldest growth of aspens in the world. I think they reckon it's about, what did they say, about 300,000 years old? Something like that. I have not heard, but I, yes. do, I do know that the largest organism in the world, which, yes. is, which is the aspen tree, yes. the growth of them, is in Utah, is in uh, Fish Lake National Forest. And I've uh, spent quite a bit of time there, which is wonderful. Um, and uh, it's become the state tree in the last few years, which was kind of fun. Uh -huh. Surprise me. Yes. Um, but what draws me to these, I'm kind of drawn to fall because I just love color so much. Um, and so sometimes the green in the aspen trees, it's very beautiful, very peaceful. But, uh, but I like the drama of the color, of the color change when the and seasons you change. It so well, here we have this. Uh, a gorgeous array of, of yellows um, as the as we enter the fall season um, and you juxtapose it so admirably with its opposite in the color wheel to make it pop right right that's what I love about yellows and oranges <laughs> in the fall especially because you have the lower light yes the sun is farther I don't down on yeah, the zenith. Yes. I don't know if that's the right yes. wording, but and so you get really nice shadows. And uh, anytime you can get a blue mountain behind the yellow <laughs> aspen trees, and it just makes it it makes it sing. And it's what gives it its power and strength, and, and uh, makes it interesting. And so. here we have this beautiful blue mountain vista, which is. Vintage Utah, I think. <laughs> yes. You know, this has some really nice design elements in it. 
um, as well as color. Yes. You know, a lot of color um, uh, warms and cools, a lot of warms and cools yeah. that really make it interesting and make it feel great. Uh, but also these strong design elements in here. Yes, there's horizontals. Um, and, the, and the fence line with the bushes and, the, and then the shapes of the mountains. And then you've got about a third of the canvas here taken up by the horizontal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've got the horizontal farmhouse there and the rows of red trees horizontally. Yep. So it really has a, a strong design element to it. Yes. It makes it. Not only colors are appealing and pleasing, but the design is really interesting and can, and can really pull you in as well as just the color and how it was painted. So, and where would you like me to go? So tell us a little bit um, about your technique. Uh, when I look at this work, I, I don't see broad brush strokes. I see uh, attention to the detail, but it's somewhat abstracted. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, a lot of it depends on the painting. Um, some paintings call for a little more painterly, broad, bold strokes. Some of them, they require a little tighter handling. So if you look really close, you can really see the texture from the palette knife coming through in there. And, and it's appealing as a close-up. Interesting to see how the paint painting was done, how the paint was applied. And then you move back and it's, it all comes together and you don't really see that anymore. You see the whole, and all of those bold strokes kind of disappear. It's really interesting. This one over here. Again, you've got this wonderful uh, geometry going on here with the, the right. road cutting in. Right. Right. And, you know, I think personally that if you have a good composition, that's 75% of the battle, <laughs> you know. And so as an artist, you're looking for great composition. Because the color and those kind of things, those really draw me in, but the composition is, and, is and, kind of key. And again, we, we have the um, yellow and the violet uh, um, and, the, uh, and the electric blue. <laughs> yes, the, the blue and the orange. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm lost in my color wheel. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I'm an artist and I forget my colors names sometimes too. So, so yeah, doesn't isn't that just awesome? Yes. How you can is. you know just really pulls that oh, tree absolutely. out. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I may have pushed the colors a little bit on the blue, but sometimes in the fall you really get something close to that. And you get a little moisture in the air from the cool. And it, uh, and it and it can really do that. It's not a photograph. You no. have artistic license, Douglas. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> and if you look in close to this one, um, some of the strokes are a little more bold up in the tree. Uh, you know, taken and just kind of pushed it across there, and uh, let it be a little bit more painterly. And it it uh, reads very well when you step back. And how we have this vertical influence of the tree, the grasses, the fence posts, and so on, with just an occasional deviation for interest. Yeah. It's quite remarkable. And then you've got your, your green and your red. Yes. Here. I love I love some to get a little bit of red. These angles. The uh, it's a geometric wonder. Yeah, it's a yes. it's a fantastic composition. Um and a nice little interest here with some ah, yes. animals ah, in the yes. distance. I so. almost missed those. <laughs> it brings it kind of down to earth a little bit. Let's swing around here to this. This is most unusual for you. Now, yeah, um, this now is that, very different for me. Uh, well, I wanted to say that this is the Great Salt Lake, but since the Great Salt Lake has no more water in it, it can't be. <laughs> what is it? This is actually Utah Lake, and, and ah. I live close to the south end. And, All right. and so this is where this is. Um, looking kind of northwest a little bit, 
I believe this is Ochre Mountains here. Uh -huh. Anyway, the, it's a winter painting. I don't do a lot of winter paintings, but there's some really nice color going on in there, yes. even though it's a winter scene. And uh, I love doing these, I call these Western skies. But I just yes. love, I love the, the gradation from the deep blues to yellows and soft greens. And so when I first came to this country, well, you can't really guess that I'm from long ago and far away, can you? <laughs> no, but I am. When I first came to this country, it was, there was something different about it. And I couldn't put my finger on it until I'd been driving around for about five weeks in the West. And it suddenly dawned on me that the sky was big. <laughs> we don't have that, isn't it weird? We don't have that in Europe where I'm yeah. from. The, the sky isn't big, but in this country, the sky is immense. Yeah. And I've always been impressed with that. And then later on, I discovered that they talk about big sky country. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that's what I see here. And right. And Douglas talking about this magnificent sky. It's right. gorgeous. Right. Yeah. And that, that's why I like this, because it gives you the feel of wide open and distant mountains with the sun just kind of starting yes. to hit on them. There's a mountain here, giving this all shadow. So, yes. And then this, I decided to break it up a little bit with a branch in there, which I like. I think it's Excellent a nice, nice design element. Yes, absolutely. Um, most of these ones I do, I just, I just leave the sky on its own, and uh, and they're pretty popular. Very necessary element. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And now we transition to this fabulous piece. Okay, here. this is just kind of like a celebration of color, if you would. And uh, I run across these canyon maples, is what they're called, um, early part of fall, um, September, mid to late September, they, they start changing color before anything else. Uh, they're, they're lower elevation than the aspens. They go up to, you know, they start about... I don't know, 6,000 feet, mm -hmm. and then all the way up to 10,000 feet, but mostly down eight, eight to six to 8,000. And uh, <clears throat> in the fall, they just, they changed into these amazing, amazing reds. And when you get that crisp, cool light coming in behind here, it's kind of backlit, and then the, the shadow on the mountain behind there, uh, you can really get some dramatic stuff. And uh, those those trees, they just, they have, it's like they have a switch inside them. They're so amazing. You walk past them and you just, you feel happy. You just feel so vibrant. So uh, Douglas is hitting the nail on the head because as lovely as this is as a portrayal of the natural wonders of Douglas's world in Utah. <laughs> the reality is that all art is about how we feel. It's how it makes us feel. And very often we get folks in here who will say, well, I like that, and I like that, I don't like that so much, I like that, I like that. And it resonates, right. the art resonates with something inside us. Yes. And, and uh, Douglas's work certainly does that. It makes us feel at home. It makes us feel comfortable in our world and that all is well in our world. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. That's, that means a lot to me because that's yes. one of the things that I really strive for yes. in my paintings is to give you the feeling that you're there. I don't care so much about the technical, everything right. I just yes. want you to be able to feel yes. like you're there. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> Appreciate Good it. job, Douglas. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, I said thank you very much, everyone, but they're expecting <laughs> me to say goodbye. I can say au revoir, auf Wiedersehen, our feet are the same, all those things. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, you enjoying or watching this uh, little, little ditty, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Fabulous. It's absolutely. <laughs>